Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a lot of awesome news for you today. Um, but before we get into it, I gotta remind you, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED. To enter to win the Nintendo Switch OLED, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel and we will announce the winner in a live stream in early October. One thing to note here is that we actually do giveaways every single month. And the base requirement is that we only give away to people who are subscribed to the channel. So even if you're not interested in this one, we have a new giveaway next month and the month after and the month after that. So you might as well just subscribe for that or subscribe for the real reason because you actually enjoy me. <laughs> All right, folks, let's get right into this stuff here. We have a lot to talk about today. Um, we got Nintendo potentially releasing, well, not potentially, they're going to be releasing a new controller. Uh, so we'll get into that here. Uh, we also have another update on that Nintendo Switch 13.0.0 update. And yes, we have last week's sales in from Japan, which matter obviously for us Switch people because that is the week of WarioWare Get It Together coming out. So we'll get to talk about all that. Let's just jump right into it after I remind you that, hey, you see this shirt? You like this shirt? It's cool. It's brand new merch we have. Uh, you can head down to the top link in the description uh, to get this shirt for yourself. Um, I like it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. All right. The very first story we have today deals with Nintendo has registered brand new controllers literally today. All right. So here's the information we have. It was filed with the FCC by Nintendo of Japan. It uses the 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth standard, which is the exact same that the Joy-Con use. And it has a 3.5 milli, uh, a milliamp out power, milliamp power output. I don't know. I, I get confused with all of the different terminology they use for power output, but it has a very small amount of power output to use the controllers, uh, which again is actually very, very close to what the Joy-Con use. It is, however, not an amendment to the Joy-Con registration with the FCC, but it's actually registered as an entirely new controller. So while it sounds like that, maybe it's a new pro controller, maybe it's a new control input in general. Maybe we're getting a tennis racket or something. I have no idea, right? This is all we know is that Nintendo registered this. Um, there are confidential aspects to this filing. Uh, obviously, what the controller looks like, how it's built, all that jazz. None of that stuff is available at this point, uh, which is completely normal, by the way, for something that hasn't been announced. I know sometimes we see patents out there. This isn't a patent. This is an actual FCC filing, which is usually pre precursor to actually putting something on sale. Um, the confidentiality, interestingly enough, expires on March 6th of 2022. That's not when the filing expires, that's when the confidentiality does. So as of March 6th, 2022, literally whatever this filing is, whatever type of controller it is, would be fully unveiled if for some reason Nintendo hasn't already unveiled it. Although it's pretty normal for the product to be unveiled and sometimes even released before these confidentiality dates come to pass. Notably, they don't make filings like this just to release new colors of Joy-Con or custom themed uh, Pro Controllers. So we can kind of rule out those as necessarily being what this is. Those can all fit under the old FCC filing. Again, those are just color palette swaps. Um, that's not something that the FCC really cares about too much. Um, now, I did notice this stuff off of Samus Hunter on Twitter originally. And what's interesting is she said, uh, and this I'm considering this to be a rumor at this point because the FCC filing is real. I can look at it. I can see it. There's a link down in the description. But she additionally said uh, that it could be announced very soon. Uh, maybe even today, but if not today, pretty soon. Uh, this could be an announcement, obviously, in a supposed upcoming Direct. We'll have to wait and see on that front. But yeah, that's really, really interesting. As for what it could be, obviously, we could be looking at something like N64 controllers, uh, if you guys remember, the NES and SNES uh, were they had controllers made that slide onto the side of your Switch to charge them, um, and that was for the NES and SNES apps that are on the Switch. And if the N64, which is now rumored to be coming, uh, is going to be, it would make somewhat sense anyways if they had N64 controllers that you could slide on and purchase separately, and that would require a separate filing with the FCC, and they would be wireless. So that could be what this is. Could be something that's for some reason Game Boy related, although all the controls you need for Game Boy already exist in the Joy-Con. I have no idea. It's just something we're going to have to wait and see. Obviously, there's also that faint hope, and I'm calling it faint 
uh, because I'm not so sure Nintendo's ever going to do anything about it. It could be literally a brand new Joy-Con, a brand new version of the Joy-Con that fixes drift, and that would, because it's a, a literal part change, would require a brand new filing. So there is hope out there that that's what this is, and Nintendo's about to announce new Joy-Con. But again, I wouldn't count on that, and I would assume if it was new Joy-Con, they would also be included with the Switch OLED, because why would you release the old system with the old Joy-Con if you have new ones? So I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that front. Uh, but this is something that's factually happening. Nintendo did file this with the FCC. We just aren't exactly sure what it is. So a lot of speculation could be revealed soon. If nothing else, March 6, 2022 is when we'll actually know everything about um, this, not patent, but this, you know, for sale filing with the FCC. So we'll see. Next up, we have a small update, but I wanted to bring it up anyways on that 13.0.0 update that released two days ago. Uh, obviously, yesterday we spent a lot of time talking about all the big features that were announced by Nintendo, uh, but there actually was something else that Nintendo didn't announce, and I'm I'm kind of curious why they didn't. It is a rather small thing, uh, but it is something that probably should have been changed a while ago. So if you didn't know, you could take screenshots and you know short little 30 second video clips, and they go into an album. And from that album, you're able to share them on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, however, when you go to share it, you've only been able to use 140 characters in your tweet. Uh, this is actually the old Twitter limit for tweets, and it probably, I think, was the limit still back in 2017, but that limit has changed and doubled the 280 characters on Twitter but that never changed on Switch until today, or, well, two days ago. The 13.0.0 update actually changed the current character limit to Twitter's standard character limit today. So, yeah, congrats. You can now do full tweets like you normally can do from your phone and anywhere else. So, uh, it's a really tiny, small thing, but you know what? For people that do happen to share their screenshots and videos on social media and use Twitter as an avenue... Hey, you know what? It's good to be able to get full use of it like you would in any other Twitter application. All right, our last story is updated sales figures from Japan from last week. These sales figures come from Famitsu. There will be Media Create ones at some point later today, uh, but usually the Famitsu and Media Create are within margin of error of each other. Uh, we have the top 10 game sales, and interestingly, uh, a PlayStation game is actually at the top of the list in Japan, and that's a, a pretty big rarity, uh, but that's because a massively popular IP in Japan dropped last week, and that would be Tales of Arise. The number one spot is occupied by Tales of, of Arise for PlayStation 4, selling 151,316 units. The number three spot is also occupied by, again, Tales of Arise, uh, which for the PlayStation 5 selling 50,482 units. Now, I obviously find this very interesting because the Tales of series actually has a long history on Nintendo platforms too, and yet it's not there. I have to wonder how well would a Tales of Arise sold if they also had a Nintendo Switch version, at least one available right now. Um, you know, that 151,000 sounds nice, but could it have been a 300, 400,000 unit seller on Switch? You have to wonder, again, Nintendo platforms are like the only thing that's really, you know, prominently relevant in Japan. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it was a mistake, but hey, it is what it is. It's probably going to go on to sell record numbers. I think they put out a report uh, this morning that it had, um, you know, between digital and physical already uh, sold over a million units. That's really great. It's just, man, why isn't this on Switch? I just... I've I've seen gameplay of it. I don't know I don't know why it's not there. It doesn't look like something that or feel like something watching it that couldn't be on Switch. But it is what it is. They made that decision. Now you notice I skipped the number two spot because number two is actually Nintendo's WarioWare Get It Together, which also released last week, and that debuted with seventy two thousand two hundred and seventy seven units. Not bad for WarioWare. I'm not exactly sure how that compares to prior WarioWare releases, but hey, you know. It would have been number one if not for Tales of Arise. Um, next up at number four, we have uh, Ring Fit Adventure for Switch. That one sold 14,628 units. That is creeping slowly to 3 million in Japan. That's big for that game. At number five, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Still going strong at 13,863 units. That one has crossed 4 million. Uh, we have Momotaro Densaru Showa Hensei Rawa Tai No Taiban. I I don't even know. I, I probably butchered that name, but 
It is a Konami game, um, and it is sold 8,749 units on Switch this week at number seven. Uh, then we have at number uh, nine, eight? Wait, I'm confused. I don't know how my numbers worked here. Yeah, number number eight, I think. Oh, yeah, number eight. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Sorry. My numbers on my on my chart here are a little off. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate uh, is at number eight with uh, 8,428 units. That is almost at four and a half million. Uh, at number nine, we have uh, Yeez. Uh, what is that? Yeez 9. Uh, that game has sold uh, 7,000. 324 units on Switch. That was a new release last week, so it did crack the top 10. And at number 10, we have Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, with 7,000 units, uh, and that one is over 4 million as well in Japan. So really, really good stuff from a game perspective. But what about from a hardware perspective? Well, from a hardware perspective, the Nintendo Switch is still at number one with 67,114 units last week. That's a 7,000 unit roughly increase over the week prior. Uh, although it is a decrease over the same week last year. Again, though, last year it was probably still dealing with boosting from Animal Crossing. We also had uh, Paper uh, Mario and all that. So I don't know. It is what it is. That's just what it is. You know, There hasn't been a big game released on Switch in a little while. Um, year to date, there are 3,778,286 3, units, which is ahead of last year. Uh, PlayStation 5 is at number two. It sold 16,975 units. It's actually a 50 unit decrease or something like that over last week. So it is what it is. Uh, but they have they have sold 774,000 this year. Likely going to hit a million, maybe, depending on how they do during the holidays. Um, the Xbox Series is doing well as well this week with 2,089 units. Again, a slight decrease, but they have sold over 56,000 units in japan playstation 4 is still charting at 1763 units which was a 300 unit increase probably due to the release of tales arise i would assume uh, but they've only sold 94,000. it's very clear that they are phasing that out um, but the lifetime sales of playstation 4 are at 9,384,000. million um, 3ds is still on the charts as well it was 789 units um, so yep, yeah, I mean the 3DS isn't even in production anymore. So as soon as they're out of units, it is what it is. Uh, but the 3DS has sold 24,580,992 units. This is a number to pay attention to because I believe that is the best selling Nintendo platform in Japan ever. But Nintendo Switch is at 21,118,660 units, has a brand new model launching next month, has a couple Pokemon games on the horizon, Metroid. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty safe to presume that Switch is probably going to become easily the number one selling platform in Japan of all time. But we'll have to wait and see on that front. So that's what we got for you guys today. You know, kind of short and sweet compared to some prior ones. But hey, I'm just really glad to bring this new story to you. Obviously, the controller story to me is the big one because there's a lot of potential there, but what is it? We don't know, at least at the time of recording. Maybe there's an amendment made it, made uh, in the video, because while I'm editing, it gets announced, but we'll see. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.